Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Microbial World. So today let's discuss about phase contrast microscope. So the phase contrast microscope it was developed by Dutch physicist. Okay, it was developed by Dutch physicist Fritz Zernick in the early 1930s. And the invention of this microscope it helped to visualize live cells and cellular processes. And due to the contribution of this microscope, the inventor, he was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 1953. And we know that using an ordinary microscope, it is very difficult to visualize unstained living cells, right? We always have to stain that specimen in order to improve the contrast of the image. But most of the stains and staining procedures, it can kill or damage the specimen. But here, phase contrast microscope, it will allow us to visualize unstained living cells. So, this is the, uh, this is a very important thing. It helps us to visualize unstained living cells. Working principle of phase contrast microscope. So, the phase contrast microscope, it is based on the principle that small phase changes in the light rays induced by differences in the thickness and refractive index of different parts of an object can be transformed into differences in brightness or light intensity or we could say the phase contrast microscope will translate invisible phase shift into visible differences of intensities. Now this means that, now just think this is the specimen, okay. This is the specimen. So different parts of the specimen, it can differ in its thickness and refractive index and all, okay. Some part of the specimen can be thick, some part of the specimen can be thin or we could say some part of the specimen is having high refractive index, some parts of the specimen can have low refractive index. So when light pass through the specimen or object, there will be small phase change in the light rays or a phase shift we could say. So, what this phase shift means now, consider that the light it is passing through a dense medium, okay. The light it is passing through a dense medium. So, at that time the velocity of the light will decrease and also there will be a shift in the phase and there will be a phase shift. That means, phase shift means whenever the light it interact with different materials or it passes through various medium, there can be a change in the timing of the peaks and the trough of the light wave. So, uh, that is what this phase shift is and this phase shift it can lead to constructive interference or destructive interference. Uh, you will understand this more in the coming part. So, this these phase changes it is invisible to the human eyes. So, what the phase contrast microscope do is that they will convert these phase shift or phase change into visible differences of intensity or brightness. Mm? Um, so, these difference in the brightness or difference in intensity that can be detected by the human eyes. Okay. Components of phase contrast microscope. So, uh, this phase contrast microscope it is uh, similar to an ordinary compound microscope in its composition, it will be having light source, there will be condenser lens, objective lens and ocular lens will be present. But there will be two additional components in the phase contrast microscope that is substage annular diaphragm and phase plate. Hmm? So the substage annular diaphragm, it is also called annular ring, hmm? it is located below the substage condenser of the microscope. Hmm? So, it is located below the condenser of the microscope and it will help to create a narrow hollow cone or ring of light. So, what does this annular diaphragm do? It will produce a hollow cone or ring of light. Hmm? So, this is somewhat uh, how the annular diaphragm or the annular ring looks like. Face plate. So, the face plate it is also called diffraction plate or face retardation plate. Hmm? And this face plate, it is located at the objective lens, the back focal plane of objective lens. Okay. And this is a transparent glass disc. It is a transparent glass disc with one or few channels. So, you can see here, now this middle portion, this middle portion, it is devoid of light retarding material, which means 
this channel it is coated with a material that will absorb light but will not retard light okay and these two portions you can see other than the channel these two portions it is coated with light retarding material it is coated with light retarding material such as magnesium fluoride and the face plate it will help to reduce the phase of incident light so you can see here there is the light source there is the annular diaphragm below the condenser lens then there is the specimen objective lens the face plate located at the focal plane of objective lens and the image plane okay so we said earlier the annular diaphragm it will produce a hollow cone of light hmm? it will illuminate a hollow cone of light on to the specimen okay it is producing a hollow cone of light to the specimen and uh, now just consider that this is the specimen okay so if the light it is passing through a thin region of the specimen hmm? if it is passing through thin region of the specimen then there will be no phase change hmm? there will be no phase change and there will be no retardation hmm? the light it does not deviate it will be undeviated hmm? so that light ray it is the undeviated or unretarded li light ray okay it is the unretarded light ray okay so you can see here these are the unretarded light rays okay these are the unretarded light rays now if the light it is passing through a dense region of the specimen okay the light it is passing through a dense region of the specimen then the light it can deviate from its normal path hmm? so at that time there will be a phase change there will be phase change there will be retardation so this is the retarded light ray okay and this retarded light ray the retardation of the light it is 1 by 4th of the wavelength of incident light okay so now both this uh, so the retarded light ray you can see here this dotted line hmm? this is the retarded light ray this is the retarded light ray this dotted line hmm? and it will take some time to reach the observer so now both this unretarded light ray and retarded light it has to pass through the face plate okay so now this is the face plate okay this is the face plate so we have said that these two portion of the face plate it is coated with light retarding material hmm? whereas the channel that is the middle portion it is not coated with any light retarding material it will absorb the light right so it will absorb light easily now the face plate it is designed and it is positioned in such a way that the retarded light ray okay we are talking about the retarded light ray Hmm? it will pass through this area where light retarding materials are coated so we said already the retardation it is 1 by 4th the wavelength of incident light hmm? so when this retarded light ray it pass through this area where light retarding materials are coated it will again get retarded hmm? again it will be retarded by 1 by 4th wavelength so how much will be the final retardation 1 by 2 wavelength okay 1 by 2 of the wavelength of incident light okay so this is the case of retarded light ray and now the unretarded light ray it will pass through this channel where there is no uh, light retarding materials are coated it will absorb the light easily so the unretarded light ray it will pass through that area easily hmm? so uh, what happens is that now this Uh, retarded light ray and unretarded light ray it has to come together to form the image plane hmm? right now this is the unretarded light ray okay 
This is the unretarded light ray. Unretarded light ray. And this is the light ray that is Okay, this is the light ray that is retarded by 1 by 2 wavelength. This is the light ray that is retarded by 1 by 2 wavelength. So, when these two light rays recombine, what happens? It will create a destructive interference or negative interference because the uh, crust and trough of the um, unretarded light ray and retarded light ray will cancel each other and it will result in destructive interference or negative interference. Hmm? So, in this case the image will be like the image of the specimen, it image of the specimen will be dark against bright background. Okay? Now, another case, now consider if Okay, we said this is the face plate. Okay. This is the face plate. And the retarded light ray, it will pass through this area where light retarding materials are coated. Now, if the unretarded light ray, they also pass through this area itself. So, at that time, both the light rays are in the same phase. Okay. Both, both the light rays it is passing through area where light retarding material is coated. So, what happens? This is the unretarded light ray and this is the retarded light ray. Both the light rays will be in the same phase. So, at that time the intensity of the wave increases. So, this will create constructive interference or positive interference. Okay, and how the image will be? The image of the specimen will be bright against dark background. Hmm? So, this co combination of constructive and destructive interference will lead to high contrast in the image. So, the advantages and disadvantages of face contrast microscope. So, the face contrast microscope, it avoid damage of cells hmm? because there is no chemical preparation. We do not have to stain the cells or specimen. Hmm? So, it does not damage the cells and they produce high contrast images. Okay. So, as they are producing high contrast images, we can even observe the fine details of the specimen. Hmm? And another thing is that the compound microscope, it can be elevated to face contrast microscope. So, we have said the uh, face contrast microscope, the components of face contrast microscope is almost similar to that of a compound microscope. Hmm? We only have to make minor additions, okay, like uh, annular diaphragm and face plate. Hmm? Uh, that is only the uh, uh, components that is present additionally in the face contrast microscope. So, the compound microscope, it can easily be converted to a face contrast microscope with these two components. And uh, this microscope, it helps in live cell imaging and life process monitoring. And also, it is available at affordable cost. The disadvantage is that they produce a bright halo around images. Okay, this is because we said there are retarded rays and unretarded rays, right? Uh, that means the, the, uh, there is direct rays are there, that is the unretarded ray and the deviated rays are the retarded rays. So, when there is an incomplete separation of the direct rays and deviated rays, so at that time it will produce a bright halo around the images. Okay? And another disadvantage is that it is only useful for viewing individual cells or thin layer of cells. Okay? Applications of face contrast microscope. So, the face contrast microscope, it is used to visualize living cells and unstained cells. Okay. We can also view cell organelles. Okay. Cell organelles such as mitochondria, nucleus and vacuoles and all. Hmm. It is also used to study cellular events such as cell division, phagocytosis, we can also visualize cellular movements such as chromosomal movement, flagellar movement and all. Okay. 
it also enables to study the membrane permeability of the cells uh, and it is also used to observe living cells in tissue culture to monitor their growth okay these are the main applications of phase contrast microscope so this is all about phase contrast microscope thank you